Hi, this is Ren. This is Casey. And this is All Walks of Film. So Scarlett Johansson just quit uh, from her initial role to be in a movie called Rub and Tug, which was a movie about a trans man who was involved in a lot of crime uh, in a massage parlor that was... Massage parlor business. Yeah. Like lots of them, multiple ones that were like fronts for brothels essentially yeah he was essentially uh, a pimp (laughs) that were attacked like there were like assassination attempts at multiple of his establishments um it's actually a super interesting story and uh tex gill is kind of like this bigger than life um how do you say like um who's that one crime lord Al Capone? Yeah, he's like a very Al Capone type character, you know, like super flashy, lives very well, um, very charismatic guy with like flashy suits and lots of like illegal dealings and like weird ass stories about throwing cake in the faces of the, you know, of law enforcement and eventually gets caught by the IRS. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what, like, got him in legal trouble. It wasn't, like, any of the actual shit he was doing. And so the move, like, all movie about, you know, uh, tech skill is, would be super interesting. Especially because, like, he's not necessarily a very prominently known person. Like, you know, Al Capone. How many freaking movies are there about, you know, Al Capone? Like, meh. Um, or, like, the gangster type, like, in the 1920s sense. Um... Because this was all going down around, um, I believe, from, like, uh, 1964 to 1977. Um, So that could be, like, a super fun period piece. Um, But then it's got, you know, the movie that was actually in development. Written and directed by Rupert Sanders. Uh, starring Scarlett Johansson, which is the dumbest fucking idea that they could have possibly come up with since the idea that she should have starred as a Japanese woman in, well, not woman, so to speak, but yeah, actually, yeah, Japanese woman in um, the American Ghost in the Shell movie. You know, same team, same dumbass fucking concept where it doesn't fucking work. Um... And also, I have very little faith that Rupert Sanders could have put together a decent script, even with that source material. Because it's not like he could have done that with Ghost in the Shell, with all of that source material to work with, so... Um, yeah, and so far, the only movie that I've liked of his was the first Snow White and the Huntsman. But that was pretty much it. But, I mean, also, like, Charlie Theron in a bathtub of milk. You don't need good writing to make that likable. I, I haven't thought, seen it, so I don't know how good the script is. I, I just know Chris how Hemsworth bad Ghost in the and Shell was. Kristen Stewart were actually pretty good in it as well. Okay. Um, so, but, you know, Ghost in the Shell had a lot of controversy for the whitewashing. It was also we, just bad. Yeah, we made like five videos on it. Yeah, we made a billion videos on it. And there was, luckily, a huge backlash against Scar- casting Scarlett Johansson as a trans man. Whom she illustrated no emotional connection with and looks nothing the fuck like. Yeah, Um, like she doesn't even have the same body type as this. Or facial type. And like, it's not like she's going to. I'm not saying this because I think Tex Gill was ugly, but like, it's not like she was going to go ugly for the role because like, that's the traditional awards move, you know, to win an Oscar, a woman goes ugly. uh, Yeah, but I, I, I think that she would have done it to try to get accolades and all this kind of stuff. That's what I'm saying, because, like, when people are like, dude, you're taking this opportunity away from trans actors, like, this is not the right role for you, you shouldn't have done that. Her response was, oh, well, you should just redirect your comments to all of these other cisgender actors who have played trans characters and won awards for them. Meaning, she doesn't give a shit about people, she gives a shit about getting a fucking award. Um, which, of course, she points out all of this shit that people are already pissed about being problematic. You know, it's not like, oh, everyone was just super on board with... She compared herself to Jared Leto. Like, 
a dude who has been legitimately harassing people like nonstop for a few years now. Why would you do that? Anyway, not the point. Um, that was her only comment. Um, and the reason why I bring up that like that's her only comment and that she doesn't seem to have a connection is because there there are like cases where somebody doesn't necessarily fit the exact identity of the character they're portraying and it can work. Um, I, I keep defending Kubo and the Two Strings um, for having a quote-unquote whitewashed casting because A, they did attempt to make the plural, like the plurality of their casting, um, Asian American, Japanese actors, um, and uh, what's his name, Matthew McConaughey and Charlie Theron were not reached out to. They actually read the script and were so invested in the characters they asked to audition. But also, you know, it is a script that's written from the perspective of a white American director who grew up during his childhood in Japan talking about his childhood in the movie. So it makes sense that the not necessarily traditional Japanese landscape that's more fairy tale like is going to have a lot of Japanese influences because that is true to, you know, his upbringing. So to have like that kind of mixture is more honest, possibly, than like just having straight up only Japanese people. So like something like that, there's more wiggle room there. Um, or like the guy from 13 Reasons Why who plays Tony. You know, he is not a gay person at all. He is a straight Latino dude who is playing a gay Latino dude, but he read the script and the character of Tony reminded him a lot of like his best friend from like all of their years growing up. And he was really invested in the character because he knows this person. He is not the person, but he knows that person and he cares about the character. So like, it doesn't always have to be, you can only be this character if you ascribe to the same identity check boxes. Yeah, and getting on that, uh, there are a lot of films that I've seen with cis actors who play trans characters that I love and I think are incredible films. Um, one that won't be mentioned just because it's kind of a twist, um, but uh, it's it's a Neil Jordan film. You can probably figure it out from that. Um that's one that's really great. Uh, Hedvig and the Angry Inch is uh, an amazing film. and um, Where you're doing right by the character first and foremost. Right. And there are circumstances where I can understand the argument to make a cis act actor or actress uh, you know, play a trans character. Uh, one of the things that um, council of geeks brought up was uh you know if you're doing a period piece where like hormone therapy was not available to have somebody that you know gender is a little bit more fluid uh with their identity than you know more of a transition um that seems to happen with trans people yeah and i mean not everybody goes through like a physical transition. Yeah. Although there, there are, there has been the possibility that Tech Skill did. That's one of those things. Like we're not really ever gonna know it for sure, but like it, it possibly happened. Um, and that may or may not have even been necessary to address in the movie. But wouldn't we have access to his medical records now? Uh, now that he's passed and everything. Even if, like, legally you could have access to the medical records, you don't necessarily know that the re medical records are there to be accessed. Okay. But also, a lot of shit like this gets done on the black market, where it's not, like, through legitimate means right, and right. easily accessible. So, um, all of that aside, it might seem, like, you could say, like, well, you didn't see the movie and you didn't read the script, so you're just making presumptions. But we did have the last movie to go off of. We do have, you know, the comments by the content creators to go off of. And everything points to this was just a bad fucking idea. Yeah, with, and it was just awards bait. Yeah. I'm familiar enough with, 
you know, Rupert Sanders' writing style and where his interests align. And I am very familiar with Scarlett Johansson's thoughts and her career trajectory. And I know how she feels about the situation. And I feel like it's not that unfair to be like, no, that was a stupid fucking choice. And that should not have happened. So on the face of it, her pulling out may or may not be... I mean, like, I'm glad that she did pull out. Um, And before she pulled out, I was initially hoping something like that could happen, specifically because the tech skill story is so good, I would like to see a movie of it. Just not one written by Rupert Sanders, and definitely not one starring Scarlett Johansson. Um, So what I was hoping was, bringing this to light and there being a big controversy controversy about it, would sort of like pivot a second movie you know maybe the rights like especially now that scar joe's pulled out and there's this whole argument of like well without her star power attached to the movie and her name attached to the movie to sell it let's just sell the rights off to somebody else who can actually handle the source material so now that she's gone i think it's quite possible rupert sanders is just gonna sell the rights to somebody else and we can get a different writer, and we can get a different director, and we can do a different bout of, a- of casting. Um, a lot of people have been saying Chaz Bono would be a good fit, and I definitely see that if, like, he gets offered the position and wants to take it. Like, I could see that super easy. Yeah, but... the only thing that I would say with Chaz Bono, and this would have to be uh, something that the actor accepts, uh, which is they, they might have to play down his masculinity a little bit. Yeah, they might have to... Oh, eh, not really, because, I mean, I don't know. that That's something where... Chaz Bono is such a fucking good actor. Like, I am always just kind of shocked when I see him in stuff. Because he is kind of a chameleon actor. He can't really just, like, lose himself in a role. So I don't know that, like... He necessarily needs to be played down in any particular way because I think he could really handle um, the full extent of the character. You know, the the transitioning side of it, um, the physical elements of, like, um, one of the things is before he was sort of like this over-glorified pimp, he was, uh, I think he worked at a ranch and he did, like, he was, like, a really (laughs) prominent horseback rider. Like, I think some kind of award-winning, like, uh, equestrian So, like, I think he could probably pull off doing some of the more physical stuff like that. Um, I know he was on... Well, never mind. Um, I think he could do some of that. I think he can do a lot of the, like, more fun, over-the-top kind of elements of the story, too. Um, I just think, like, quality-wise, he could really pull it off super well. And then he does also look a lot like tech skill. And that helps, but that's not always super duper necessary because you can do so much with you know makeup and styling and things like that um if you get a good team to do it it doesn't always work but um that one that jessica chastain was in the the fucking poker movie that she was in um the styling to make her look like the original person was truly atrocious and terrible um but if you get a good stylist team not necessary but if Chaz Bono like really wants to do it that would be fucking cool but you also need a better writer and you need a better director it's not like if Rupert Sanders wrote the script and had cast Chaz Bono I would suddenly be like well everything is peachy keen like that still would have sucked and Um, this this movie might be doomed from the start yeah regardless yeah um I will say the idea that you'd have to um cancel the movie altogether just because you don't have Scarlett Johansson's quote-unquote star power is such fucking bullshit because uh, actors in general don't really sell movies anymore, but Scarlett Johansson by herself sure as fuck does not sell movie tickets. Like, Ghost in the Shell was selling it off of only, like, you can look at Scarlett Johansson and she's practically naked, isn't that cool? And you still couldn't get at, like, you couldn't get people to pay to see that. Like, if if you go, go down, like, the list of movies that she's been in that she has actually starred in by herself and has not been, like, added as part of an ensemble, um, the only movie that was, like, really financially successful was Lucy, and 70% of the revenue from that came from overseas, and it didn't do particularly well in any specific country, 
Um, it mostly just did pretty well because it was made for so little money um, that it was pretty financially profitable. Um, outside of America, the next uh, best-selling place that it was at was in China, and it didn't necessarily do particularly well there. I think it only made like $44 million. Um, so it's not like... like that one kind of worked out, but I wouldn't, like, stake my movie's marketability on her name alone. That is such a stupid idea. But here's the more important thing. She didn't drop Rub and Tug because she had a change of heart. Like, let's be fucking honest. She dropped out the second that the Black Widow solo movie had a serious director brought on board. And you know they told her... We can only do this if you get the fuck out of the hot water with this other thing. Don't pursue this, you know, you want to get an Oscar for doing this, like, stupid artsy movie that's not going to sell tickets, that's not going to make money, and it's only going to make you even more unlikable than you've already been for the past few years. Or you could do an Avengers movie that you're actually going to star in. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, and I... I got a feeling that, uh... <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the way that I see casting going now, um, since Scarlett Johansson is out, uh, I know that they could possibly get a transgender actor, but like for some reason in the back of my head, I'm like, Tilda Swinton. They're going to go to Tilda Swinton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the club of like the super um PC, like we're the white women who will play everyone but white women club right yeah <laughs> it's like scarlett johansson tilda swinton and emma stone they're just like we're just gonna play every race and ethnicity besides just like white women uh, <laughs> it would totally be tilda swinton wouldn't it yeah um, um but fuck. like that's that makes me so sad because she's such a good actress and she makes such bad choices sometimes and i will say that there is a problem with representation in hollywood and it's mostly for, like, the outliers, like, you know, anybody outside of, like, African-American and Hispanic, though, you know, there are issues with those people as well, um, you know, in, in cinema. But they are represented in cinema in ways that, like, Asians and Native Americans and, like, transgender community aren't. I mean, there's still a long way to go, but I, I kind of see what you mean. They're... Everyone is not really progressing at the same rate in terms of representation in media. Well, I would say that, you know, like with Native Americans, like mostly uh, when they're movies with Native American people, they try to get actual Native American actors, although they did have Johnny Depp play um, <laughs> in The Lone Ranger and uh, Tonto. Yeah. And uh, that... Uh, movie did not do well and people want to chalk it up to other things i think whitewashing was a major factor yeah i mean like what is a financially successful film that includes whitewashing that isn't specifically jesus yeah i, I can't you know obviously <laughs> those those christian films will do well because only the yeah. ones about jesus yeah that is true exodus um the exodus movie that had that whole big um, whitewashing backlash, nobody saw that because Jesus wasn't in it. Well, but that was also financed by, like, a major Hollywood studio versus ones that are financed by Christian studios, which the Christian studio yeah, ones... But, yeah, but I'm saying, like, Passion of the Christ is another whitewash one, and that made, like, a bajillion freaking dollars because it's about Jesus. Yeah. So what is a whitewash movie that is financially successful that doesn't have Jesus in it? As of recent, I, I can't think of one. Uh, which is not to say that one doesn't exist. I just can't think of one right I mean, off the bat. Been a, I, my knee-jerk reaction is to say it's been a few decades since we've had a financially successful movie that included whitewashing. Um, well, the big thing, and one thing that I've noticed, is when you represent communities, they'll come out in droves to see it. The Jungle Book is a great example of a movie that's never been whitewashed. Mowgli is always played by an Indian actor, mm -hmm. um, except for maybe the animated one, animated couple where they might have used a white actor to play Mowgli. But like, as far as live action goes, Mowgli's never been 
whitewashed. And when I worked at the movie theater, we had tons of Indian people come to the movie to see that movie specifically, and I don't think that that is a coincidence. Well, and it also didn't alienate white people. Yeah, because they came out too, you yeah. know, with their families and everything like that. And, you know, we're seeing this with, you know, Black Panther. That was another insanely successful movie. Um, insanely success- successful in America and overseas is the big thing. It's because so many times you hear about, like, well, you know, people are more open-minded in America, but we also have to keep them in mind the foreign market. And, you know, they're all just racist sons of bitches overseas, like not like here in America, right? Now, like, to no, be that, fair... That's, that's not true either, shush. <laughs> now, to be fair with Black Panther, Black Panther was part of a franchise, so, like, it had that to go off of, too. I mean, absolutely, but it was still a solo film that did, like, very, very well that had two white dudes in it in very tertiary roles. Yeah, and the most important thing is when you're, you know, having a representation, you shouldn't just make a film about representation because obviously people will come out in droves and say, oh, it's the SJW movie, you know, because, like, when you write poor characters and you have representation but you don't do anything with it, like, I would say... I mean, it was the difference between Black Panther and A Wrinkle in Time. Like... The reason why A Wrinkle in Time did badly in comparison is not because, oh, it had too many black people. It was because it was just a shitty movie that nobody wanted to see. And it was boring and stupid and very badly written. It didn't have anything to do with the casting or the representation of it. Yeah, That's the only reason it made as much money yeah, as it did. Which is which is funny because, like, you know, the casting, casting Oprah, you know, it is, is usually... Idea. It was such a bad idea, but, like, usually... That was the mark of success, which is another example of why stars can't sell a movie. If Oprah can't sell your fucking movie, yeah. there is no... I mean, if Chris <laughs> uh, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence can't sell a movie, stars cannot sell movies. It's not going to happen. But if for something like Rub and Tug, you really need, like, theoretically speaking, because I don't believe this is true, but if you have to make the argument of, like, you need a big name to sell the movie... Have a big name cast and, um, you know, outside of tech skill. Although I would say, like, who the fuck doesn't know Chaz Bono? Like, I don't. He's a, not a an A list. He's not like an A list celebrity. Don't know who he is? Well, he's not like an A list celebrity. Like, he's not share status, obviously. But it's not like he's an unknown. But you could totally cast an unknown actor who fits the part well, and have your movie function and be, you know, moderately successful. Um, and just have other big name people in other roles where they actually fit into your movie. Yeah, like Scarlett Johansson could have been like one of the massage women, or and that would have worked. That she could have been a detective or something like that. You know, I I know, but (laughs) yeah. She kind of has this idea that anything that's even a little bit about the concept of identity is just automatically something that will work for her. And it's not true, especially since she doesn't really do anything with it in, like, any of the movies that she's in that are about identity. I'm not impressed with her in Lost in Translation. I would say that the best performance that she did in... I'm just talking about performance. I'm not talking about the movie itself because I wasn't a huge fan, but, like... Under the Skin was like one of those movies where, you know, she felt like she didn't in the movie anything to it. Yeah, she well, she felt like an alien in her own skin, and like that's the only time where that kind of performance seems to work for her. And which is kind of funny because I, I would normally chalk that, that up to bad acting. I don't agree with that at all. I do think that it was bad acting. I think she gave a terrible performance in Under the Skin. I think you needed somebody with a lot more ability to sell the concept of that movie. But a lot of that came down to the script and the direction also didn't lend itself to a lot of exploration of identity outside of a very superficial sense. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's amazing how it explores identity and blah, blah, blah. But like... There's not a lot there that can't be summed up in, like, two or three sentences. It's not a very deep look at, like, the philosophical concepts of it. And it's all you did for a two-hour movie. Um, But that has been her shtick. You know, Lost in Translation. I don't think she's particularly good in it. But, like, 
she didn't do a lot for me, but it was okay. Um, she, then she moved on to um, Under the Skin. She did her that was about the identity, but like Scarlett Johansson actually came in at the very last second. They did most of production with a different actress, and I've heard the other actresses. Um, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but I've heard some of her reading of those lines, and honestly, I liked her performance a lot better. Um, she did it in Coast in the Shell to terrible effect, again, partly from her own, um, I would say, weak abilities as an actress, but also terrible writing, terrible direction. Um, but she, it's not like she's ever impressed me as Black Widow either outside of her physical ability to do fight scenes. Um, she didn't particularly impress me in Lucy either outside of her ability to do, like, fight scenes. You know, she's a halfway decent... I mean, not halfway decent. She's a pretty decent action star, and she has a pretty face. But, like, yeah. outside of that, I don't really know how much use you can get out of her as an actress and as a performer. And also, it's not like she really needed... She didn't really need this crap. Like, oh, no, she she couldn't be in this movie... She can go home and cry into her piles and piles of money. Yeah. Um, so, as far as what I'd like to see in the future, I, I would like to see more films starring trans actors and actresses, um, you know, represented by actual members of the community. Uh, one movie that did this I wasn't too fond of was Tangerine. Um, there's also the Ryan Murphy show, Pose that has recently come out that has the largest number of represented trans actors and actresses. There's, um, you, there's also the fantastic film by hook or by crook yeah. that was written, directed and stars, um, trans a actor, content creators, musicians. They, they, they do everything really. Um, and, you know, the, a big part of the reason why that movie works is because it's from their perspective about their lives and they're the ones who are telling it. I think another reason why I really appreciated that movie was because normally in any other context, uh, they would be lovers. And I yeah, like the I fact that that, <laughs> that the it's movie went out of its way yeah. to yeah to show, uh, you know, friendship between these two trans characters instead of... Um, the Cartman idea of, like, trannies belong together. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, like, yeah, could have totally happened in the hands of somebody who and, uh, wasn't as intelligent about it, for and sure. Th that's an issue that I see with a lot of LGBT entertainment, which is that, you know, they do tend to fall in the lines of being movies about romance. And I, I, I would like to see us move past... Films just being about that sort of experience. I think there's yeah. more stories to tell about trans actors, and like that's uh, that's one. Uh, you know, Rub and Tug was a good idea, and is a film that I would like to see made, just not with the people that were originally involved in it. Right, and with her, uh, with by Hooker by Crook too. The other thing that's really cool about it is. Um, they're not, like, desexualized or, like, viewed as undesirable in that movie. Um, Val has, like, a very serious girlfriend that, you know, they live together. And then um, over the course of the movie, Shy kind of, like, woos and gets a girlfriend as well. Um, and it's, like, not really that big a deal in the movie in a good way. It's just, like, a thing that happens, but it's mostly about their friendship with one another. Um... But yeah, so like, I'm glad that Scarlett Johansson quit. I really hope that this convinces uh, Rupert Sanders to drop the project and sell the rights to somebody who can hopefully handle it a little bit better. For the love of God, please not Ryan Murphy. Please not Ryan Murphy. But um, not that he can't make good stuff, although he can make some really terrible shit. I think everyone kind of forgot how abysmally terrible the new normal was. But um, also just because, like, he's he's always working. He's always doing a TV show. He, he's got, you know, American Horror Story, American Crime Story, and they overlap, and he's doing all this work. Um, we can get 
the perspective of more people. There yeah. are more people who can write and who can direct and who can star. Um, it, it doesn't need to be Ryan Murphy and his tiny little niche fan, you know, club of like super modelish, attractive looking men. Um, we can we can get outside of that because, especially in fucking Hollywood in Los Angeles, there are plenty of talented people who are better suited for the project. Now, one thing that I will say, and I know, I know some people will have disagreements with we uh, with me on this, but um, I think pe- the importance is to show representation in front of the camera more than it is behind the camera. Even though behind the camera is important, I think that people actually need to see the representation versus, you know, just hear about it. Because most people, most non-film people don't pay attention to the credits outside of you know I mean, who I they agree, actually but see it also has to be a good movie right and it most definitely 100 percent can happen where you know human beings are empathetic and moonlight was written uh well the movie moonlight was adapted for the screen by a uh by somebody who was straight and they were still able to be very universal in the writing style and very faithful to the character and you know i don't have a problem with like oh how dare you straight man because the fact that he was straight didn't interfere with his ability to tell a story well and to empathize and to really understand the character so right. like I... it when i say that it needs to be in the hands of the right people i'm not saying necessarily you can only have a trans male writer and only a trans male director that's more than a little bit ridiculous um yeah, I do think that you should have trans people as advisors. Kind of like, um, I, I still haven't seen the film, but um, the Wachowskis, when they still, uh, before they uh, accepted their trans identity or whatever uh, that was going on for the film Bound, mm-hmm. um, they they did get um, uh, pointers and uh, advice from women and lesbians on like how to accurately portray that relationship right. and i think like having advisors and stuff like that is important on that note i also would not like to see the wachowski take on this series which Just is kind of funny because they haven't like made good movies in a long time i i i do need to check out the show um sensei yeah sensei i haven't but. seen any of that and i've heard it's really good maybe but like just going off of their past few movies they have not made good movies in a long time <laughs> yeah i i think the last wachowski wachowski film that i liked was v for vendetta and they yeah. just wrote the script to that they weren't even directing that one mm-hmm. um and there were some problems with like their adaptation of it there were some like pretty glaring problems with it. There were aspects of Cloud Atlas that I liked, but overall, I was not a huge fan of that movie. And a lot of the stuff with identity was very badly mishandled. Let's <laughs> yeah. be honest. Yeah. So that said, I'm glad about that part. I'm a little salty that the only reason that Scarlett Johansson is dropping out is so she can go make even more millions of dollars with Disney on this other Black Widow movie that I could not care less about because she is such an uninteresting Which is crazy because like movies. we already got her backstory. We in, already have her backstory and it really In sucked. Winter Soldier. Well, the interesting thing too is like her backstory is it does suck, but to me, that was when she was finally becoming more of a character, and everyone hated it. Everyone lost their shit, and they hated it so much, which I think is a big part of the reason why it took so goddamn long to get her solo movie, um, to even have, like, a director on board. And the reason why earlier I said a serious director is because, um, for a long time, they were talking about how the Black Widow solo movie needs to be a comedy, and they specifically were looking at the, um, the director who had done no feature films of any type and her at the time her latest uh thing that she had directed was the short film Olaf's Frozen Adventure which was run out of theaters because people didn't want to see it so fucking badly um and that's who they were looking at to direct the Black Widow solo movie and that was just such a god awful bad idea um and i know that the director who was brought on board is not her 
It's somebody else who's actually made a, some, like, she actually has some IMDb credits. I'm not familiar with any of her work, so I don't know quality-wise, but just knowing the Black Widow character, I'm just like, I probably won't even see it. I really, I'm boycotting ScarJo anyway, but also just, like, I don't know what else you could tell me about her character that's actually going to make me like her at this point. Yeah, and plus, like, from my understanding, like, if you were going to make a Black Widow movie, uh, like, I would hope uh, that you kind of, like, move the series forward instead of, like, oh, hey, we're getting, uh, you know, essentially something like Wonder Woman, which... Yuck. Yeah. Um, or, you know, something like Red Sparrow, which... Yuck. Is kind of what the the idea of making a Black Widow movie seems to me. Yeah, it was like a PG-13 Red Sparrow. Yeah. So... Minus Jennifer Lawrence, so, like, really, what's the point? Well, you know, some people think Scarlett Johansson is really attractive, but... Yeah, but she's... That's not enough to sell me on a movie ticket, and apparently it's not enough to sell America on a movie <laughs> ticket either, so... I mean, I guarantee the Scar Like, this Black Widow movie is gonna do super gangbusters because it's gonna be... You know, the fir- you know, the Marvel female centric superhero movie. But it's probably gonna come after Captain Marvel. So Well at Captain that point, Marvel I think comes out of- this year. Yeah, exactly. So it's gonna come out after Captain Marvel. So I think at that point even a lot of that's gonna die down, so Yeah. And like Scarjo is no Brie Larson, like I-, I think it's gonna do like Ant Man numbers where it's like Yeah, I think it- so too. It's like you know, it's a Marvel film, so it, it makes it's some money, tank, but like, yeah, but it's not going to be great. A lot of people probably won't really see it um, because, I mean, I know there's been a lot of complaints about like, you know, the lack of Black Widow merch and toys and things like that. But I also just never hear people say things like Black Widow is my favorite Avenger. I mean, and it can definitely be argued pretty well that a big part of it is she doesn't have very much screen time um, in like any film. Yeah, but I mean, it, I think that's a big part of it. It's just, like, people... From my personal anecdotal experience... I'm not saying nobody likes Black Widow. I'm just saying people who primarily follow the movies and not comics don't generally say, like, I like Black Widow more than Captain America. I mean, hello, Scarlet Witch has a little bit more um, Oh, I see a lot her- more people who like yeah. Scarlet Witch than Black Widow. Again, totally anecdotal. Well, but- well that's because they you know, established a relationship with Vision and, like, that kind of stuff was interesting. Also, she had her whole thing with Quicksilver, which was not played by Evan Peters, which was kind of weird because of, like, Wright's stuff um, having to do with X-Men and the she Avengers. Also, and also, like, Elizabeth Olsen is a better actress than Scarlett Johansson, and she's able to bring a little bit more life and a little bit more humor and romance and seriousness and, like, dramatic gravity to a lot of the situations that Scarlet Witch gets put in. And I think Scarlet Witch has had a little bit more screen time than um, Black Widow in the past couple movies. I remember her a lot more prominently in the past two Avengers movies than Scarlet... Or, um, than, um... I'm getting confused because <laughs> there's, Scarlet jo- yeah. or there's Scarlet Witch and then Scarlet Johansson's Black Widow. Um, but there's been more, to my recollection, I remember better. Um, Scarlet Witch is scenes and her importance um in the past two avengers movies than black widows black widow just kind of occasionally can move a plot along sometimes but in general she doesn't do a lot as an avenger yeah probably probably her best role in all the films was probably winter soldier because like they established her a little bit more and her relationship with captain america was interesting and you know, kind of went places, but... I just remember she did some shit with a hard drive in that movie. (laughs) Like, that's really all I remember. I remember she had, like, a hard drive or a thumb drive, and she was putting it in a computer, and she was like, you got it, Captain America, I'll take care of that. I don't remember seeing her again. So, yeah, we have a lot of shade to throw at... Scarlett Johansson. Um, it, it does seem that a lot of popular actresses right now are people that we're not fond of. We have this. We have Gal Gadot. Uh, we have half of Tilda Swinton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, and then Emma Stone has re- 
continually been dropping the ball, and I used to like her a lot. I used to like her too. She, she just doesn't. The do last very role well. that I really liked her in was Birdman. Same, yeah, she was really good in Birdman. I know a ton um, of people liked La La Land. I I just she was can't stand that movie. So bad in that movie. Yeah. Um, and then that was another instance of just terrible casting, like really bad ideas. Um, Hollywood's really got to like get their shit together when it comes to casting. Um, there's so many movies, like big name movies that come out that just have the worst casting behind them. Well, I I think one of the big problems is they cast their film uh, before anything else. You know, oftentimes You're before right. like, they even write. Look at I write. Love Dogs. Like, I literally, if you had just told me, you know, blindfolded, hands over my ears, write the cast for the next Wes Anderson movie, I could have told you everyone who was going to be in that movie, except for Greta Gerwig. But, like, she wasn't a surprise either. Like, it's just so obvious now, like, who they're going to pick for what roles. And it doesn't have anything to do with who's a good fit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more forgivable with Isle of Dogs. Not, like, with the language and stuff that they use in that film. But it's a little bit more forgivable uh, when you whitewash voice actors versus when you whitewash, like, people that you can actually see that are present. Well, I didn't mean because it was um, a whitewashed film, although that too, um, because you did have Scarlett Johansson (laughs) and Tilda Swinton again with their like whitewashed roles, but more because, oh, the next animated um, Wes Anderson movie, you know, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. So what do you guys think of Scarlett Johansson as an actress? What do you think of this departure from Robin Tug? Uh, what do you think about the idea of having more trans representation in cinema? Let us know in the comments below, and thank you for listening.